What's up guys, um, I'm filming this one a little bit later than I wanted to, um, but I'm going to be uploading it straight away. Um, today, as you can tell from the thumbnail and from the title of the video, I'm doing another bad film review, this time for the Santa Claus 3, The Escape Clause. seen one of my bad film reviews before now, um, I take a film, I break it down into 10 parts, I give each of those parts a score out of uh, 10, and then I add that together to give a score out of 100. Um, I am actually at the moment looking at changing one of them, um, just to give a better, more broader look at the film, um, I'm in the process of figuring out which one that will be, um, but I will, I will be changing one to include costuming in my breakdown, but as of yet, it is script, casting, acting, directing, cinematography, editing, set design, soundtrack, special and visual effects, and accuracy and originality. Um, accuracy and originality is together in the one um, one, it's the one score. Alright, so for the Santa Claus 3, um, the Rotten Tomatoes critic score was 17%, um, which, yeah, I mean, if you get 17% on anything in life, you failed pretty bad. Um, the Metacritic score was 32 uh, the IMDb score was a 4.7 out of 10, um, which equates to 47% anyway. Um, the Rotten Tomatoes audience score was 39%, already higher than either of the critic scores. Um, and the Metacritic user um, gave a 4.4 or 44%, um, giving us a total percentage of 36 um, for the film, um, so yeah, um, obviously I did a bad film review on it, I don't, I don't agree with it, I think we've established by now that I kind of like trashy films for the fact that there's always something to learn from a bad film to help you make a great film, um, and so here, um, yeah. Um, by the way, I'm in no way defending this film if you don't like this film. I'm just giving what I think is a more fair assessment of the film, um, from a filmmaker's point of view. Um, so the script, uh, for this is a six. Um, most of the scores here are fairly average range. Um, so, uh, five, sixes and sevens. Um, so the script is a six, um, purely for the fact that it's, you, it's a generic Christmas film, um, you've got, um, the whole family drama part of Christmas, um, they add in the, it's stressful being Santa thing, which is every Santa movie, um, and then on top of that you've got this basic plot line of one mythical character wants to take over the role of Santa and have his own holiday and that's really the only defining thing for this film that sets it apart from just about any other holiday Santa family Christmas film. Uh, the casting also gets a six for the most part most of the actors I only know from the Santa Claus franchise um, um, and I don't think I've seen Martin Short in anything else except for this role. So fairly basic casting to me. Um, the acting 
is a 7. Uh, they do overact a little bit. Um, I don't, I don't, I think by the time they got to the third one, they were like, okay, we've done the one where it's like, Santa could be anybody that puts on the suit. And then they did one where it's like, well, now you've got to find Mrs. Claus. And this was just like a, let's make a third one to make a trilogy. And by this point, they were all tired of making the films. So they're just like, eh, we might as well have a bit of fun with it. It's not going to be a great film anyway. Um, so the acting kind of gets a seven. Um, but it does get a higher score than the other two uh, scores that I've given so far. Because um, it's... How do I word this? Um, the the, the characterisation that they give each of the... Um, members of the legendary council or whatever it is they call themselves in this film is really cool so um, obviously Sand is always happy um, Sandman's always asleep um, Mother Nature's kind and, and, and gentle um, that's really I mean Cupid's kind of, you don't really see, like that's, that's pretty much the main three, you don't really see any others that much, but yeah, anyway, um, directing gets a six, um, I mean, again, fairly average, um, cinematography gets a five, um, this probably shares its score with my special effects, even though I've given special effects an extra point. Um, so I'll divul I, I will divulge all of that when I get to that bit. Um, editing gets a five, and my tablet decides to have a fit. That's cool. Um, so editing gets a five, again, fairly basic. Um, there's nothing really exciting in the way that they edit this film. Um, set design gets the highest score simply because they had to design the North Pole and I realised that they could have just used the sets from like the first two films but the fact remains is that they used it and didn't just go and make some other generic looking Santa's workshop thing. They kept that feel for the, fi for the film. Um, so the set design gets an 8. Soundtrack gets a 7, again, slightly above average, Christmas music, kind of feel it in yourself there. Um, anytime Jack Frost comes on screen by himself, there's like the ominous villain music and it, it sets itself, it's a fairly basic, it, it's Disney. It sets itself up as a basic Disney film. Um, special and visual effects gets a 6. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty, the only time I've, I actually use, like, digital special effects is when they are, like, travelling back in time. Um, and other than that, it's all, the only other effects that they use are the elf ears and all of the makeup for the, um... for the council members. Um, the score could have been higher, but I feel like they could have done a lot more with Mother Nature's costume. Because um, when you look at her, it's just a woman in a dress with a crown. And it's like you could have, like, you know, gone with the whole, like, tree thing or... You know, like, like there's other ways you could have gone to give her more of a... When you look at her, it's like, oh, that's Mother Nature. Rather than just like, who's that again? Uh, Father Times, an old dude with a stick. Um, he could have, he could have had like an hourglass at the top of it. Or, you know, like a, like a armful of watches that shows each of the different time zones or something like they could have there's other cool things they could have done with the costumes um 
and I'm sort of stuck in that under there because makeup, special effects, visual effects. Uh, and its originality is a six because it's third in a trilogy and by that point nothing's really original. Um, and also I think the only thing that this, at least for back in, for back in the heart time when it was released, this was the only instance I knew of, like, Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and Mother Nature and that team teaming up. Um, but now that we have Rise of the Guardians, and I know for a fact that there's the book series that's based on, it's kind of like this isn't an original concept to me, and that was just done better. Um, like, people generally prefer that movie. Um, I even had a friend tell me the other day when they were looking up the critics' score for this because they were curious. Um, tell me that they preferred the first one, um, and I was like, "Yeah, the the first one's got the highest score out of the trilogy." So, um, but yeah, so when I add up all my scores, I get to sixty-two percent, which I feel is a fairer um, appreciation of what the film should have been. Um, Seventeen percent ridiculous. Um, it is still a good film for if you want to just, like, sit down with your family and just watch a movie. Um, but at the same time, obviously, there's going to be better films that you'll want to watch first. And this one's just sort of sits there in that, in that middle category of, yeah, that's a good, you know, like, if you want to watch a Christmas movie marathon... Sure, you put on the Santa Claus trilogy. Um, if you want to just watch a Christmas film, there's like a whole heap of better ones out there. Not maybe before Christmas, I'm gonna do a full video on it. Um, but yeah, that's all I've got for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm rambling, so until next time. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you liked that, please. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload uh, a new video. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share it with your friends as well. And if you want to see more content in between uploads, you can follow my Instagram at Ace of the Arts or my Tumblr at Stories Around a Campfire. And I will see you in the next video.